Toca directo hoy también por la tarde con Nara, con Filipa. Vamos a ver si se conectan. Y se va conectando también más gente. Hola, hola. ¿Quiénes vais llegando? Hay directo. Hola Marta, ¿qué tal? Hola Nara, ¿qué tal? Muy bien. Muy bien, gracias. Aquí estoy invitando a Filipa también. A ver. A ver qué tal. Bien, a ver, esperando, se va conectando. Hoy, como os decía, tenemos el directo junto con Nara y Filipa. A ver si nos ve y se conecta. Hola a todo el mundo. Creo que ya está. Ya. ¿Puede ser? Hola, Filipa, buenas tardes. Hola. Hola, ¿qué tal? ¿Qué tal? Bueno, yo os voy a dejar con la entrevista con Nare y Filipa. Comentaros que esta entrevista será en inglés, ya que Nara es brasileña y estamos dirigiéndonos un poco más al público internacional. Si queréis encontrar la descripción de los talleres de Filipa, lo tenéis en nuestro canal de YouTube o en la página web, y ahí están en castellano, así que no hay problema. Igualmente, si vais haciendo preguntas, yo por aquí os voy contestando también. Así que, Nara, Filipa, adelante. <risa> y gracias. Gracias, Marta. How are you, Filipa, today? How are you feeling? Hi, hello, Marta, hello, Nara. <risa> I'm feeling great, thank you. <risa> ok, then. First of all, I'd like to thank again uh, Barcelona Needs Festival organization uh, for the invitation to be here and, and to conduct the interview and to participate uh, covering the festival. Thank you very much, Marta. Thank you for you, Marta. Uh, so, Filipa, we are friends already, so I, I feel at home with you. And I'm very happy you be a, a teacher in the festival, in the Bar in Barcelona Festival. And uh, I'd like to know something about you, some things about you, in order for the public know more about your work and your about knitting background, right? <laughs> um, yeah, so um, it's really nice to, to be chatting with you here, Nara. I'm super glad uh, that I will be taking part of this uh, Barcelona Needs um, this year as um, a teacher. Uh, I have already uh, made part, well, I'm, um, I'm visiting uh, Barcelona Needs since its first edition, uh, but I have um, participated in the online version last year, but I'm really looking forward <laughs> for this year's festival, uh, with lots of hugs, I hope. <laughs> and um, so um, my background actually is from engineering, and then I got to knitting. So <laughs> I'm, um, I'm an engineer, and then um, I changed careers, <laughs> and I began knitting, and designing, and teaching. And um, This year's um, festival, I'll be hosting three workshops, <laughs> and so I'm really excited. Uh, great. Filipa, um, although you are a reference for Portuguese, Brazilian, and Spanish knitter, knitters already, right? Because you are um, of, often in, in Spanish, Portuguese, and Brazilian festivals also. Um, maybe someone does not know you so well, um, like your work, in what you do, what exactly you do and design. So could you pl please tell us about your techniques, about your preferences in, in knitting? Uh, what do you like to knit most? What kind of pieces? I know that you like very much new things and new techniques, uh, new, um, new workshops, and I know that you have an exclusive, exclusive um, taller uh, workshop in the festival. So please uh, talk, talk a little bit more about it. 
Okay, so um, yes, I'm really motivated about new things, new techniques, and experimenting with new yarns and new techniques and mixing techniques. Um, I'm also addicted to old magazines and books, so it's um, impossible <laughs> to avoid that. So all my work has a little touch of vintage um, inspiration. And um, I began uh, as a teacher. Uh, I began teaching knitting classes. And then I start designing. And um, I have found that I really <laughs> have lots of fun uh, designing because it, it, it allows me to experiment <laughs> a lot. And um, also I kind of fall in love with learning um, the shaping and how to really make um, a garment fit like it should. I'm also a little bit obsessed about the finishing touches because it can, it can be a really simple garment uh, with nothing, no special stitch or technique. If it's impeccably finished, um, it will look great. If you have a spectacular two-color brioche thing and then you won't finish it right, it will look a mess. Um, but um, I also, I, I do ha feel uh, very inspired by the yarn itself, by um, when I, I love to try <laughs> new yarns um, and new fibers. And that's when, I, I also I started working with the Portuguese brand and it's always a challenge because they are always sending me new yarns, new fibers to try. And that's really motivating for me for designing and creating um, new garments. Um, I love garment design more. <laughs> so I love uh, sweaters and cardigans. Right. Um, so, in relation to this collaboration with the Portuguese uh, yarn brand, I know that you have a YouTube channel uh, which you started some years ago and you are a pioneer in teaching Portuguese style knitting, right? Can you tell us a little bit more your YouTube channel, what kind of techniques you teach? Uh, I know also that you have a very successful podcast and you do uh, knit-alongs uh, every, every season and you have many um, activities together with your community. So please tell us about it and how people can follow you and follow your work in the podcast. So my YouTube channel is about, um, it's almost 10 years. <laughs> so in 2023, it will be 10 years. Um, when I started uh, teaching knitting classes, there were no videos for Portuguese knitters. So in Portuguese style technique, which was strand the, the yarn around our necks. And um, I started um, teaching and my students, <laughs> Um, have troubles remember some of the techniques from the classes when they were at home. So I started uh, creating videos and um, never stopped <laughs> from 2013, so for almost 10 years. And uh, each week I publish a new video with a knitting technique. Um, the community... Uh, started growing around the these knitting videos on this YouTube channel. And we started also hosting um, some knit alongs. Uh, so uh, right now I always host three big uh, knit alongs here in Portugal in January, in June, and now in September, <laughs> we have just started one. And on this uh, knit alongs, um, I, always teach how to knit a garment from beginning to end. Um, this year we have made, we have knitted a sweater in January, a shawl in June, and now we are knitting a vest and for the autumn knit along. And it's, it's great because we have um, this 
gigantic Facebook groups. <laughs> we have lots of Portuguese knitters involved with um, with the knit-alongs. And um, the videos do help a lot because the people always um, feel like confident enough to finish the garment, no matter what the technique um, is used. Uh, so it's it's great. We also, well, we started a podcast uh, now in the COVID pandemic. The isolation <laughs> made us do it. Um, I host a podcast, which is called Need for a Happier World with, um, with my colleague, my, my friend, Liliana, uh, who's also a knitter. And um, we talk a lot about fibers, about um, knitting techniques, knitting knitwear design. Um, we also invite lots of um, other Portuguese artists and knitwear designers, and we try to to touch <laughs> every knitting and crochet aspects on the fiber world here in Portugal. Um, so when I started um, teaching and when I started publishing the YouTube channel, when I started um, publishing my designs, um, the knitting um, Portuguese, the Portuguese knitting community was really small, and um, it was hard uh, for us to connect with each other. And now with the podcast and with the YouTube channel and with the knit-alongs, we have a really strong community and um, I feel really proud about that because um, I feel like uh, now Portuguese knitting has a lot of visibility, also the Portuguese knitting technique and the Portuguese knitting style, which now everyone around the world wants to learn. Uh, so I feel really proud about it. Great. Thank you, Filipa. So let's talk about your workshop in your workshops in festival you were teaching three uh, great yeah. classes and i propose something i will um i will we, we can pass through all of it and you tell us a little bit more about each one what do you think yes okay perfect. So I see here in the website of the festival, the festival, which is very complete, so you can find all the information in English, both in English and in Spanish, that on Saturday um, you will teach a, the perfect finish for your hand knits. So could you please tell us a little bit about the finishing stuff? Is it important? Why is it so important during your knitting uh, garments and so on? Yes. <laughs> um, on that workshop, I really um, uh, propose that you look to your uh, knitting, to your finishings just at the beginning of the garment and not in the end. So it's not, um, sometimes it's, it it can make your life um, so much easier. If you just, um, when you're casting on or even before casting on, if you stop and you think for a moment, uh, where where is the, um, what's the best place to change yarns? Uh, where, where is the best place then to weave in some ends that you have if you, if you have to change colors or if you have uh, if you end up with a ball of yarn and you have to uh, start a new one uh, oh, uh, sometimes you can even introduce some minor changes on your pattern that will then at the end make your life so much easier like moving an increase or a decrease one stitch inwards so that you ha don't have an increase right on the on the salvage uh, on the edge of the knitting and so it's like small details that then will make a huge difference on the final garment. Um, if you on the salvage, then you will have to pick up stitches. Perhaps you can work that salvage in a different stitch to help you ha have a better finishing than when you have to pick up those stitches. Or if you have seamings, if you have a salvage that then you have to seam with mattress stitch to another piece of the garment 
how can you make it easier and better and looking so much neater and um if you know that uh you know what what are the best places to change yarns on your on your garment then in the end when you go to weave in those strands of yarn you know exactly what to do and the finish will be perfect uh if you won't have that problem of getting with the end of one ball of yarn and have to start a new one right here in the middle of your front um that you don't want it so um it's just like changing the way of thinking a bit and start thinking about the finishing touches just right at the beginning of the garment, not in the end. Um, also, which uh, when you when you leave uh, some ends to then some tails to then weave in in the end, um, how long should they be? And <laughs> So um, if you think about that on the beginning, then uh, the finishings of your garment will be much more easier for you and uh, it, will look, it will also look <laughs> much better. Um, so I really think that it's, it's, it's important. It's those kind of small details, like when you're working in the round and you always have that step in between the first stitch and the last stitch and how to properly weave in that end so that it looks perfect and it's like this small small tiny details that then um, make a huge difference on the final garment that's great so that's why it's so important and uh as a beginner knitter i can say that after uh, learning these techniques my knitting finish finishing like went a lot way better and i think my my garments are much uh better now much more finished and polished so i think it's yeah, worth it's, it too it's also important to look at the fibers you're working because it's not yeah. the same to weave in an end on a super bulky yarn or in a fingering weight yarn or in a mohair or in a cotton uh, right yarn or in linen or in bamboo uh so it's also about learning this um, that the then we'll make your knitting look really, really good. Right. So um, still on Saturday, you will teach a workshop named Upgrade Your Stripes with Bias Knitting, which is the workshop that uh, is exclusive to the festival, right? It's brand new. You've yes. never teach it. So tell all about, uh, about it to us, please. Uh, well, on my knitting classes, um, right after the beginner's lesson, so when my students are confident enough to knit and purl and cast on and bind off, they want to knit colors. And the first thing they learn is how to knit stripes. Right. But it's kind of boring because you have like <laughs> horizontal stripes and right. that's it. So with this workshop, I upgrade that. So you will be working on stripes. Um, easy as that. But with bias knitting, which is super simple, easy technique, you just have to know a simple increase and a simple decrease, which I, I will teach you on the workshop, of course. And you, with that technique, you can change directions on your stripes. So you can move on to something really fun like this uh, so this is still so a rectangle beautiful. but instead of knitting stripes that look horizontal and boring um you knit um this bias striping mm -hmm. and then i'll show you also how to change directions and change directions again because um also bias striping you can work all the garment just like this and you work all the garment with your bias uh, stripes but it's so much fun when you start changing directions and playing along with the direction of the stripes and so here you have just two colors and garter stitch which is looks really cool 
on the wrong side also. Right. But you can also experiment with new colors and joining wow. lots of new colors. And you can leave garter stitch and go to stock net stitch. stitch and also play with colors and again so i'm good. only knitting stripes so it's just about here i start working with black then i change to white to pink but it's it's like stripes it's really really simple and uh, you only have to play with a simple increase and decrease and also having fun working you can even uh instead of leaving your edges square like this you can even leave them in bias like this. So it's it's a really fun technique, even if, you, well, even no, especially if you're a beginner, <laughs> because you will feel like super power knitter. Super with pro. a really simple, uh, easy technique. Um, so it's just knitting stripes, just like horizontal stripes, but we give them a little twist. Uh, we introduce a small decrease and increase, and we start playing around and changing directions and knitting the, on, the, on the other way. And it's a really creative um, knitting because you can always change your minds and change directions again and again. So it's really creative. You can experiment a lot. And it will bring lots of color and a super um, interesting touch even to a rectangle, which could be like a scarf, but you can make it really fun instead of horizontal stripes, just by introducing this biased knitting technique. Right. Um, and Philippa, one more advantage that I saw in your class is that uh, you can burn your stash also with leftovers yep. of colors. So, you know, because we knitters have many leftovers with, with different, um, I mean, weights and colors. So I think it's, it's nice to have this technique also for you to use this and yeah, and make more with your stash project because it yes it is so great colors and in small amounts of different colors so and it's so beautiful also to mix all the, these colors so um going ahead on sunday we will teach how to knit top down setting sleeves and i know this is one of your spe specialties so and, and it's so difficult, I mean, in terms of constructions and in terms of understanding all the calculations. So I think it's, um, uh, it, it's aimed to more uh, intermediate knitters. And so I, I'll ask you please to tell us a little bit more uh, about, about it. And to like, if I am an um, adventurous beginner, as I am, should I go to this, to this class or not? Do you think it's very much advanced or I can, I can face it and do it and understand it? Yeah, it's, it's an intermediate, intermediate um, level. Um, right. It's, we are working with picking up stitches, working short rows. Um, so it's really uh, advanced beginner. <laughs> adventurous beginner or intermediate class uh, because uh, it's really great for someone who has already knitted uh, garments like cardigans or sweaters because you have to understand a little bit about how a sleeve um, forms and how it appears. So I will be teaching how to picking up to how to pick up stitches around um, the armhole and then how to work on short rows uh, to make the sleeve cap and then how to knit the, the sleeve from the top down. But <laughs> I'm, um, uh, I'm, I have tried to simplify the math the most that I possibly can. <laughs> that you can. <laughs> but it's, it's important and we will focus a lot on that because this kind of satin sleeves, it's kind of the perfect sleeve. 
you can make this sleeve match exactly your shoulder and your armhole, no matter what your size and what your measurements are. You just have to know your wool, of course, your gauge, and you have to know your measurements. And you can make it fit perfectly because in this kind of sleeve, everything is adjustable. So you can adjust uh, the measurement that you want on your sleeve, on your upper arm, also the height on your armhole, the depth of the armhole, the opening here, if you want it more narrow or a more open with um, uh, also here on the shoulder, if you have like um, a narrow shoulder or a, a large shoulder. And this sleeve is amazing because you can adjust everything. <laughs> That's why it's so perfect. Uh, but for that to work always, you have to know two or three proportions that are really important. So this is what I will be teaching in this class. I'll, I'll be teaching you how to adjust your uh, sleeve to your measurements and um, your armhole opening to your measurements and how to pick up stitches on the perfect rate to have the upper arm stitches that you need and also how to work this short rows cap in the way that will always fit perfect on your measure measurements. So it's, it's, um, it's kind of a technique uh, kind of workshop we will be talking a lot <laughs> but we also be knitting we will be knitting a sleeve cap uh, and uh, I think it's super interesting because you then you can adjust your pattern so every time you face you are faced with a setting sleeve pattern no matter if they have designed the sleeve to be seamed, to be worked uh, flat and then seamed, um, or uh, if they have any kind of, any, any other kind of construction, you can adjust it to knit it this way. So you won't, you can even use, well, lots of vintage patterns that were designed for the sleeves to be knitted flat and then seamed on the armhole opening. And you can just uh, knit them with, without the seams. So you just pick up the stitches and you work the sleeve from, from the top down. So you, have, you work the body of the garment of, or the sweater exactly as in the pattern. And then you adjust to work your sleeve from the top down seamlessly. And so it's a really useful technique to have your, on your knitting bag of techniques. Yeah, definitely, I agree. Um, so, Philippa, if there are knitters that, that, that are in doubt about attending your workshops or not, what, what message would you send them? Um, well, <laughs> come along. We usually have lots of fun on my workshops. Um, also, I, I, I will help you no matter... Well, I'm Portuguese, so nor English nor Spanish are my <laughs> native language. Uh, I do speak Spanish and I do speak English. And so my workshop are kind of um, all languages. I also, I always help, I or I try to help on your native uh, language. And I also uh, try to teach you on all the techniques. So in the Portuguese knitting technique on continental style and on, on English style even if you are left-handed, um, just because I really want you to take the most of each class. So I'll be sure to, I adapt to your um, technique, to your knitting technique and not the reverse. So I always um, try to show <laughs> every techniques on the knitting styles that I have on the classroom. So if you need um, English style or continental style or Portuguese style, uh, I got you covered. That's so great, Philippa. And um, to finish up, I'd like to ask you uh, to tell us something that nobody in this live stream knows about you. <laughs> well, um, 
well, nobody, mm, you kind of know lots of things about me now. So yeah. <laughs> I will have, um, perhaps tell one thing. I do love to cook. And I, lo I do love to prepare homemade jams. Okay. Yeah, you do. <laughs> So, so nice, Filipa. So that's great. Thanks, Filipa, again. And uh, Marta also. I think there were some comments during the, um, the live streams. I don't know if you want to clarify, Marta. Eh, yes, bueno, lo digo en español. Eh, sí, muchas gracias por haber hecho esta entrevista, Nara. Muchas gracias, Filipa. A todo el mundo, eh, eh, vuelvo a repetir, estas entrevistas están siendo en inglés, ya que Nara es brasileña. Y estamos intentando llevar a un público un poco más internacional para que conozcan a las profesoras. Eh, en este caso podéis encontrar la descripción de parte de Filipa directamente en nuestro canal de YouTube o en la página web, en la página directamente de Filipa. Y eso, muchísimas gracias y nos vemos mañana. Sí, sí. sí. Muchas gracias, gracias. Marta. Adiós. 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 Adiós.